Okay. Um, so my name is Isaac Saxonov. I'm 17. I'm a junior at Piedmont High. Um, I like to do a lot of stuff in my free time. I like to code. Um, I like to write. Um, I play a lot of board games. I play chess. And I'm also I'm on the track and field team, so I run. Um, so some of my hobbies. Um, yeah. That's perfect. And you have a okay. nonprofit organization, which yeah. is why you reached out to me. Um, tell me about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So Bay Rise is, it's a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we came together as a group, uh, I think late 2021. Um, and we were just doing small things like teaching relatives about um, computer science and like doing trash pickups around the Bay Area, that kind of thing. Um, but now we've sort of expanded, we branched out a little more. And now we have a lot more members. We're teaching at like different organizations um, and we're, we're impacting a lot more kids now. Um, and I mean, the the general idea of Bay Rise is just to give kids who don't really have opportunities to like learn um, more opportunities, really. So whether that be in computer science or arts and crafts and physics, those are the three subjects that we're doing right now. Yeah. So sorry, computer science, arts and crafts. What are the three subjects? Physics. And physics. Physics. Yeah. And then in addition to that, there's this community outreach component. It looks like where you um, gather resources and give out blankets and things oh, yeah. on house. Talk about that part too. Yeah. So we have a few other initiatives. So one of them is just the trash pickups where wherever we see fit, we'll go. We have like supplies and we'll get the community involved and do some trash pickups. And then we also have our bi-monthly warming campaign, which is we worked with Northeast Fleece, which is like um, a blanket manufacturer that, and they gave us like a charity discount, like a bulk discount. So we get we get uh, blankets and like clothes from them, and then we uh, we distribute it through like soup kitchens and like uh, homeless shelters, that kind of thing, um, to people that need them. Yeah. Beautiful. And just a, an observational note: I'm, I'm hearing you say "we" a lot, and I always I often talk about the rhythm of me and we. Who is the we involved in the organization, and kind yeah. of how does it how does it come to be? So uh, there's two other like sort of founding members. There's another co-founder and there's like a founding member. So Jasper Humphreys is the other co-founder along with me. And then we have Caden Carr, who is another founding member and he's a really big part of the organization as well. Um, so we kind of, it was us three when it started. And then now we've kind of brought on like a bigger team. Um, yeah. Okay, so 2021, that's like right on the heels of pandemic. I mean, not even yeah. like, sort of still in the throw of it. So this, comes about in some ways during the pandemic yeah what yeah talk about like what it is that led you to want to do this maybe even describe for me a little bit what the pandemic was like for you as a teenager um some of the challenges yeah. that you were experiencing and some of the maybe it gave you an opportunity to notice things about your community mm. Just give me a sense of that well so for me I, I think I had a sort of unique experience in the pandemic in that I came from a super like small middle school and we've been with each other since kindergarten um and then I was going to high school in the pandemic like right when it started so then I'm going into this new high school and this high school it, it's at Pima High so I don't know if you know Pima High but like there's like a like a sort of there's a there's a path and like everybody there knows each other since kindergarten so I'm like a new kid in this like new city um and I don't know anyone and I'm in online school so it's a little bit like isolating. I felt a little isolated in that sense. Um, so I, I don't know. It, it, it was like, it, it wasn't like the best experience, but you know, I came out of it. I made friends now. Um, but I guess it really just like, um, Be, before, you, before you go onto that, it came out of it. Like, I think sometimes a lot of people want to do that. They want to skip the struggle and be like, yeah. oh, I'm cool, I'm good. But actually I think it's, really important to take a little time to talk about that because it kind of there's like a shared level of vulnerability and relatability because I think other people experience some struggle so it sounds like there was the path where lots of other people were funneled in so they'd been together all this time and you come in as kind of a newbie yeah so what were some of the like what was that logistically like for you to kind of not know who your people are and find your bearings there well standing yeah in a better place now but just kind of looking back yeah um, well, I remember like, I mean, online, when it was during online, I didn't really feel it too much. It was like, I mean, everybody, you're not really talking to your friends online. It's just not, I mean, you're looking at a screen. Um, and I could still call like my friends from middle school or whatever, like whenever. So it wasn't that big a deal. But when we started coming like 
because like when the at towards the end of the pandemic like we were going to school like half of the days so it was like a sort of like hybrid type of thing um and then there i sort i sort of started to feel it because like i didn't talk to these people enough to actually like become friends really but i would still have to be in class and like not really know where to sit or like who to sit with and that kind of thing um so i think like the thing that really helped me like sort of break out of my shell was joining the track team um or yeah so well actually when because uh, during covid they combined track and cross country so it was like the same sport um and i joined cross country and then i was really bad because um, i never ran and then i this is like I was not in shape from, you know, the pandemic and stuff. And these people Nobody were running, was, right? but <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, but people were really nice there. Um, and I, I feel like cross country and track is sort of like the most, like people are really, I don't know why, but like compared to soccer, which is what I usually played and it's harder to play soccer during the pandemic, obviously with the team and stuff. Um, but people were always cheering me down on, even when I was like at the back of the pack and sort of like, oh, okay, so these, these are kind of nice people. Um, so, you know, I started doing that. I transitioned a short distance. Now I'm a sprinter. Um, I'm, you know, doing pretty good over there. Um, but yeah, I think that was like the first time I really like sort of found people who I was like comfortable being around and that kind of thing. Cool. And what, do you think this struggle of kind of having to go through this, you know, finding your place thing, um, did that in any way inspire you to think about, oh, what else could I do for the community? Or how does how does your trajectory like lead you to like, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to do this thing. And a lot of people don't follow through. So kind of talk me through yeah. how you actually like what made you think like, oh, this is something that we need and I'm going to do it. Well, yeah, I think it definitely led to some introspection, like, I mean, that situation, but also just being alone in the pandemic for so long and just that like certain people have certain opportunities. Um, so when I was like younger in middle school, I got introduced to computer science by a teacher randomly. Like he was out of the blue. She was like, she's on a, on a computer here. Why don't you try this? I went home, started playing with that all night. Um, and I, now I'm like, I still code and I like one of my pa passions. Um, and I, and I sort of realized in that time that like, I got kind of got lucky here. Like a lot of people I'm sure did not get this sort of opportunity. Um, and so, like, when I was, like, you know, in quarantine, like, nothing to do, coding away on my computer or something else, I'm, like, there's probably some people who, like, could be doing this right now, but didn't get the chance. So, I kind of want to make sure more people would get the chance. Um, and, yeah. yeah. So, that's your initial idea. And then it kind of grows. And so, you've got that inspiration. And then, like, what leads from that idea to actually, you know, coming together with it, coming yeah. to fruition? Well, really. Um, it's the team. I mean, going at something alone, especially like this is super difficult. So if you don't have someone, if you don't have people around you that are committed to helping you like achieve this thing, it's probably not going to work. You have to find people that are passionate about the same thing, like that are passionate with you. Um, so that was Caden and Jasper. Uh, Caden is our head arts and crafts teacher. Um, he works with the younger kids because obviously arts and crafts is more for younger kids. Um, and he was also really passionate about teaching and bringing his arts passion to kids um and so he's also a really big part um and then jasper he was more of like um he he wasn't so much about teaching but he was like part of the finances and he saw what we were doing and he led a lot of the other initiatives like the bi-monthly warming campaign and that kind of thing so it all sort of came together pretty nicely with all of us wanting to contribute um and then it sort of worked out from there Beautiful. And I happen to be a single mom of a couple of children, and it's very hard to get them connected to things like an art class, right? Because yeah. Financially inaccessible for many people. So yeah. what's the structure of your program? How does a child come to you and get enrolled? What do the classes look like? How does that work? So, um, yeah, so we did like online classes before, um, which is like sort of like closer to when the pandemic's happening. We're not doing them right now, but we might start like some more workshops right now where like we work with other organizations, so like a middle school or like um, like a supportive housing nonprofit, that kind of thing. And then we work with the kids that they work with. Um, so that's how we do our classes right now. Yeah. Okay. So it's like funneling, you're, you're, you're partnering with organizations who are already doing service to different marginalized populations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then do you ever do like um, community separate events or is it mostly like these partnerships at this point? um we have done i mean our track pickups like we like uh we usually get people from around the community to help 
Um, so that's sort of like detached from any like specific organization. Um, yeah, but mo mostly when we're teaching kids I, right now, it's mostly attached to some organization. Um, yeah. Super cool. And I'm thinking about the old proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah. So I love the collaborative thing right down to like the beginning of starting the organization. Um, and so what is the rhythm or what is the schedule for community trash pickups and for like the handing out blankets to the unhoused population? How does that work if folks wanted to like get involved, for example? Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, for the bi-monthly warming campaign, we do that once every two months. Um, it's kind of the name. Um, and we pretty much just use funds that we fundraised. Uh, so we, we do like bake sales, like around Berkeley to get, to, you know, get funds. Um, and then that's pretty much what we used to distribute. And we go to like different homeless shelters for trash pickups. It's more of like a, I don't know, case by case basis, I guess. It really depends on like where we see is like somewhere that needs like, you know, there's like a lot of trash around there or something like that. And it could use the help. Um, and, so and do you different. guys do the work yourselves or do you, do you do kind of a community call out where you say, Hey, everybody, we're going to go and. No, we, we go, we, we, we pick up trash ourselves. Okay, cool. Have you ever considered doing a community call out so that other community members could get involved? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was, I was a little confused. Yeah. We, we did a little bit. We did uh, both. I mean, we were, uh, we were there helping, but also there were some community members um, that were helping as well. Yeah. Cool. And then do you tend to um, publicize these events on your website or how can people like find out about them? Um, I guess we didn't really, we don't really, I mean, because it's like such a like, yeah, we don't really, we didn't really, we don't really publicize like the other initiatives. I mean, because the trash break is such like on a case by case basis sort of thing, it's sort of difficult to have just like a thing where it's like everybody come to this place. It might be really far away or I don't know. So, yeah. I mean, but, but it's yeah, a good planting, idea. Planting no, it's a good idea. Food for thought, right? You could always yeah, like definitely. find out that next Tuesday you're going to go somewhere, maybe yeah. some more people. But I think it's really, really cool. Um, so you, you're 17 years old. Yeah. And what are you going to be a senior, junior? Yeah, I'm going to be a senior next year. What, what's next for you? Um, we'll see. I still want to, I don't know, pursue everything I'm pursuing. Um, I'm having, I had a lot of fun junior year. It's been fun, sort of just like learning new things um and i hope to continue what i'm doing yeah do you do you, would you like to go to college or yeah decided yet um yeah i'm def i definitely want to go to college um you know it's really like up in the air with like how everything how all college stuff works now but um i think i'll do fine wherever i go awesome and then just because you're of the age group um that will be impacted by this um yeah. do, do you follow the news yeah, I know what happened. Um, yeah, so the Supreme Court case where they, you know, took away affirmative action as um, something that colleges can use to make them more accessible. What do you think about that? Um, I mean, I didn't think about it that much, but it always felt a little like, I don't know, it's a little, it felt a little incongruous to me that like this sort of system that's like ostensibly is to like work against discrimination is sort of using a discrimination or like, it, it's sort of it's generalizing a lot i feel like something like based on like income or like economic status would be more fair than just race um it, it always just felt a little weird to me yeah okay and so for you as somebody who you know has had the capacity and the access and the resources to learn about coding and yeah uh, you know, and it seems like you've got housing and you've got all your basic needs met. Why was it important for you to get involved in helping people who might not have access to the same things that you have? Because I, I really feel like, I mean, for me personally, I feel like computer science is like becoming such a big part of like life. And like, I, I don't know, it, it just feels like if someone's not getting the access to at least like, if they want to learn, they couldn't, I feel like it's a huge disservice. So I'm really just trying to like expand who can get access to these things. Um, especially like, I feel like computer science is actually one of like, it's, it's a, it's a really good way to like, I don't know. Like, I feel like you don't really need like a, like a formal like degree or anything like that. If you know how to code, you could like create a website or that kind of thing. So I feel like it's sort of like a good way to, um, I don't know. It, it gives you a little, it gives you some more um, career prospects, I guess I would say. 
just to know the basics of that kind of thing. And you can learn on your own. You can do things on your own where like a lot of other things like require like people, even if you have the knowledge, you have to have like a degree and you have to have all this kind of thing, all these kind of things. Um, so yeah, I just feel like more people should have these opportunities and just like for all passion. I mean, arts and crafts too. Like, I think it's important that kids get to explore, you know, their creative side and, you know, they, maybe they find, oh, I really like doing art. Maybe I'll pursue this even further. Maybe this will be my career, that kind of thing. I, I feel like it's important that people, you know, get to find these things. Beautiful. And then lastly, you know, the trash pickup, the giving blankets to unhoused people. Why is that important for you to do as somebody who, you know, has your own place and has a warm bed to sleep in? Why is it important for you to help other people? Well, I mean, I, yeah. So like when I lived in Oakland and I went to, so I went to, I told you I went to school in like a, like a really small middle school. So uh, it was a charter school in Oakland. It was kind of not in like the best part of town. And like, I'd walk around, like even like I could see through my windows, there's like homeless people around the place. Um, and I always felt a little, it, it just felt a little weird. I don't know. Um, I didn't really, I don't, it, it, it just didn't really feel right that like people were like overlooked in this way, especially, I don't know. Like we, we, we I was always around them, but nobody ever like, them I ever saw them really do anything other than just like sit there um so obviously it was like important for me and my team especially because like Jasper was also he went to the same school as me so he also sort of felt the same thing as I did and he was the one who really pursued this more um I think it was really important for us that like once we had like this uh organization I guess this platform to do these things that we really you know I don't know I don't put our putting put our money where our mouths put our put our money where our mouths are but uh, not really money I don't know yeah no no I get it yeah put your money yeah. your actions where you're about this I like it I like it um and so like thinking back to the different like outreach you've done since forming this organization and collaborating with your friends and doing the work can you think of like a most a couple of most inspiring moments maybe it's something that you really remember when somebody got a blanket or somebody felt seen or you helped somebody who might not have had access otherwise something that really inspired you um yeah so i think yeah kaden he told me a story about so he he went to like a supportive housing nonprofit and there was and he was like teaching these kids how to make like i think it was like monster plushies i'm pretty sure was a thing i think i might have some pictures i could send it to you after um and he was telling me, yeah, he was telling me about like how like this kid was sort of like quiet and he wasn't really like super talkative. Um, but like once they started like sort of working with it and he kind of, I guess he kind of got lost in like, you know, um, the art or uh, like the crafts, whatever you want to call it. Um, and he started like talking to Kata more and like the other kids more. Um, and I just feel like, I don't know, when I heard about that, I was like, it's not just like about like learning the subject. It's sort of like opening yourself up to other people and like other new things. Um, and I felt like that was really cool. And then in the end, he got to take home like a plushie he didn't have before. And I, mean, I saw the picture, he seemed pretty excited about it. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. And and I mean, I can really appreciate and I think so many other people could appreciate the story that you shared in the beginning of like, and this story goes along with it too, just not quite knowing where you fit. And sometimes it's a matter of having a meaningful connection or a meaningful experience. Um, and even your own experience of like, oh, I'm in this new school. I don't know anybody. And then you, yeah. sounds like you tried out things till you found the thing that fit yeah. for you. What yeah. advice would you give to kids who are facing that very same thing, right? We, we saw a lot of mental health issues go up during the pandemic, even children dealing with suicide ideation and adults. Um, so what advice would you give to somebody who feels like they just don't know where they fit or they feel overwhelmed? What would you say? Uh, I guess don't be afraid to try new things and just be yourself because people don't really, I don't know, like if it went for me, like I thought a lot, uh, I thought a lot more about like my actions and like, oh, what is this going to look like if I do this or if I say this, when most people don't really think about that at all. So, you know, if you just talk to like, you do what you like to do and you talk to the people and you just talk to people when you can you're outgoing you're sort of just be yourself and I think you're going to find the people you like you're going to find the things you like to do and once you get those two things you're going to be you're going to do well beautiful and what would you say in your in your whole 17 years of life that you've had so far 
If you had to think back to the most important lesson that you've gained on your journey until today, what do you think that would be? Mm. Most important lesson. Okay, I think. And it can also be related to, you know, your work starting Bay Rides. Not every 17-year-old can say that they're part of an organization or that they founded one. Yeah. Um, I guess it would just be to, uh, I mean, it sounds sort of cliche, but like, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, I mean, a lot of people sort of have like, I don't know, especially like all my experiences, I've definitely, I've definitely seen this proverb in action. Um, you know, with Bay Rise, I see kids who you, you might not think they have this sort of talent for like coding or whatever, but you know, you give them a computer, you start teaching them and they kind of take the ideas and run with it. You see, oh, okay, these kids actually, they know a lot more than you think, a lot more than they, they themselves know. Um, uh, and then, you know, with starting new high school, you don't really know who the people who your friends are going to be, right? You you don't want to like rule people out just based on like, I don't know, their looks or like whatever, or you don't really know them. You really have to get to know people. Um, and then once you do, and you actually find out who's like really under, you know, who's really in their mind or whatever, you know, it's a lot easier to be friends with people. And I, I just feel like you miss out on a lot of things when you sort of rule out people or ideas just based on like what they seem like. I don't know. It's sort of, that's sort of, it's a little bit. Yeah. No, that's, that's beautiful. And if people want to follow along with Bay Rise or get involved or make a financial contribution, how can they um, follow you, keep up with your story, do all those other things? Um, I'd say go to the website and, you know, if you want to get involved, my email is on the website on the contact page. So that's probably the best way. We and have a... us your email too now. Yeah. Can you... Um. So I can put in the chat, but Isaac, Isaac.Sakhanov at gmail, or Isaac, yeah, Isaac.Sakhanov at gmail.com. Um, that's probably the best way to reach out to me and Bayrise. And Bayrise is Bayrise.com? Bay, Bayriseinc.org. Bayriseinc.org. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Um, okay, anything else you want to add before we wrap up today? Um, I guess I'd just say thank you for giving me this platform. Thank uh, you too. To oh, I have another question for you on a personal note. So you reached out to me after you read which story? What what caused I want I was curious about that. What caused you to reach out to me? Um thinking well, that I so I, I I read the story about the um it was the dancer who was like plus size or something. He was mm -hmm. talking about sort of like body image. Um and I guess I sort of kind of resonated with that. Um, so I just felt like you would be like an understanding person and you could understand like what I'm trying to do for people. Um, yeah. that's beautiful. And you know, who's going to be inspired by that? Um, the dancer who was featured in that article, um, what is it about her story that you resonated with? Um, I, I guess I've, I've dealt with people sort of treating me differently based on my looks or like that kind of thing. And it, it, it you know, it never feels good. Um, but focusing on what you can, what you can do and like your passion, that kind of thing is definitely, I think is a really good message. Um, yeah, definitely focus on your passions. I think that'll do you a lot more good than sort of focusing on like things you can't change. Yeah. Like don't let other people get in your way. I'm thinking yeah. about another quote, like, um, what other people think of me is not my business. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Yeah. Thank you too for, you know, giving me the time. <laughs> All right. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Bye -bye. See you later.